Mark closed off the discussion with a bit of a look towards the future, which I thought was quite interesting. So yeah, he said that uh, in terms of raster performance, as he put it, he's not too terribly interested in just making GPUs larger <laughs> and larger. He basically said that increasing raster performance by adding CUs, adding memory bandwidth, uh, making larger memory interfaces possibly, it's something that worked well in the past, but there's not a lot of growth left there. I think you see that with more modern chips now with GPU prices uh, going through the roof and obviously, you know, you need to fit so many GPUs on a certain wafer and that being very, very expensive now. Um, but he said right. that for ray tracing, there are quantum leaps ahead, but presumably there, I would kind of think that that is AMD led. That is an AMD led uh, portion of their technology collaboration here. And he says that machine learning, though, has the greatest potential for growth and not just in upscaling an image to high resolutions, but also in other kinds of machine learning enhancements to game graphics, possibly gameplay, other areas. He seemed very, very interested in this when I spoke to him. He seemed very, very interested in this when he was talking about it during the presentation. Um, and to that end, AMD and Sony are entering into a bit of a technology partnership called Amethyst, which if you looked it up, I looked it up after the presentation, it's a purple variety of quartz. And now if you combine yep. AMD red, Sony blue, you get purple, <laughs> which is, I think the idea behind the branding. <laughs> sapphire, you know, yeah. two different types of sapphire. Sapphire, right? ruby, amethyst, something like that. Um, <laughs> and I think the interest on Sony's side, it sounds like, is really in making architectures that work well for lightweight CNNs for real-time game graphics and that can be used for fully fused networks for graphics rendering. That's really their primary interest. Um, but they will be working on high quality CNNs and both parties apparently will be able to access those network architectures for their products. So it sounds kind of like, you know, AMD is leading the way on the main GPU designs on RT, but Sony and AMD have this collaboration for machine learning that is hopefully going to take those GPUs and basically get them to an, a space where they are being able to push out more advanced technologies because as Mark puts it here, you aren't really going to get the progress that you want in graphics technology without embracing ray tracing, without embracing machine learning, you just aren't going to get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, it is kind of like a PS5 Pro is in a sense, a kind of proving ground for these new technologies. It's getting hardware out there to, to build upon, right, Alex? Yeah. And I think this is really necessary. Um, as we saw with DLSS, it took hundreds of games and years of essentially training iteration over time to get it to the point where it was right now. And if it just stays within the the Sony ecosystem, it arguably won't get as high quality as it could. Uh, AMD iterating on it in their own sense, uh, use, leveraging their resources as well as maybe training uh, uh, data will make the model that they end up come up with with for PSSR when it's fully done, like right now we're just the very beginning of it, what will make it will make it better and more resilient. And I think that requires the hardware and software of multiple companies because AMD doesn't have nearly as much R&D as NVIDIA. And I think this is actually a great way to kind of bridge that gap that they don't have. Um, and it's great. It also makes me wonder a little bit if uh, the talked about where we still don't know about a lot about it, but FSR 4, if it is going to be a branch of PSSR essentially on PC, which would be interesting um, if that were the case. It makes me wonder where Microsoft fits into that future uh, because they also run AMD hardware on their consoles. Um, and I also like that here, it's not just about upscaling, it's just about computer graphics in general, because I think uh, denoising is a great place in the future. I also think utilizing the limited bandwidth that we have and also limited memory space that you have on consoles and using things like neural networks to increase the quality of textures, texture streaming, or even geometric quality at some point in the future, I think based upon some sort of previous data. I don't think just making things up like a, like a generative network is necessarily the current future, um, but especially for things in real time. <laughs> but uh, I, I think those are... Those are great directions, and I think that's exactly where PS6 is going to land. And something like Amethyst is going to make sure that it is actually doable within a reasonable amount of time. 
So yeah. And cool. did you get the sense that Amethyst is a is both a hardware and a software thing? Is it um, you know training models that they can use in common? Uh, to what extent does this collaboration go? What was the sense there, Oliver? Well, Mark said there are basically two parts to it, and the first part is basically a collaboration around hardware architectures. So having GPUs that are very capable for machine learning performance, and in particular, really good at processing lightweight models that might be used for real-time game graphics. The other kind of goal there is basically to do some cross-firm development of high-quality CNNs for game graphics. And there, basically, there will be some collaboration on the level of like the network architectures of those CNNs. So reading between the lines here, I would assume that basically that would probably feed into something like FSR4 or whatever AMD might be doing with machine learning next. And obviously that would also feed into presumably PSSR as well. You know, to this end, I kind of have to think that at this point, the cat's kind of out of the bag on like PlayStation 6 in terms of it being an AMD architecture, because certainly you don't announce a technology partnership like <laughs> this one without there being an intention to continue that technology partnership for the next generation of your flagship product, I would presume. They've already done two generations with AMD already. Backwards compatibility would be a major focus. x86 would be a major focus, possibly, probably there. And then, of course, with Amethyst, you know, I think this is a technology collaboration. Uh, Mark told me in the interview that it'd be a technology collaboration that he didn't expect would yield dividends necessarily in the next year or two, but would be something that we would see the results of in the next few years with an emphasis on the, on the longer term horizon of that possibility. So I would presume that this mm -hmm. would be something that would play heavily into Sony's plans for the PlayStation 6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is absolutely fascinating because if you look at, you know, essentially the transition between PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5, um, there was a lot of great stuff there, right? The CPU problem was, um, was, was, was greatly reduced. Zen 2 was a pretty good fit in terms of area, in terms of performance. Graphics, obviously, you know, you had a pretty big leap on the GPU side. Um, ray tracing was brought into the fore, but where, where do you go next? And it's, you know, the... Uh, the roadmap here is pretty straightforward, right? You know, the the transistor budgets aren't just there to double GPU size anymore. And you've got to be more innovative with how those transistors are being used. And it looks like, you know, Amethyst is essentially a statement of intent, which is like, okay, machine learning is the future. But, but what does that future actually look like? Let's work together to kind of figure out a solution here. I think it was really really fascinating stuff i mean a lot of stuff has been solved by playstation 5 the storage problem has been solved as well you know effectively um you've mm -hmm. you've got that quantum leap in bandwidth to the point where i don't think it's still being used to its fullest extent even now so you know there's a lot of great work that's been done in the existing generation and what we're seeing here is almost kind of like experimental but with obvious initial re rewards pssr uh you know when deployed in a in a good implementation is is literally game changing for something like final fantasy 7 rebirth so you know there's a lot of an initial big wins here but i think there's bigger stakes at play here i don't know what you think alex this is literally the future of gaming technology and uh this is kind of like the frontier work so to speak yeah i think uh, the stakes for amd are very high because they they they're ever shrinking desktop share and they want to still be competitive with the desktop market even if they can't compete within it completely within it but they can compete completely obviously on the handheld and console side of things where they dominate and they are the market there and but to prevent consumers from going from one market to the next and only exclusively being in that one, for example, PC market with NVIDIA primarily, uh, you still want to push technology as far as you possibly can within the budgets of a console. And this is the the initiative to start doing it. And I am very curious, though, about PS6, about what it's going to look like in hardware now, because Mark in this presentation, once again, was talking about memory bandwidth and staying on chip as much as possible, yet we already... We talked about this most recently in the direct too, but the whole cash situation of making and AMD on their side is pushing so much more cash on their GPUs and CPUs to essentially bring performance up to the level that they think is competitive, but they're not doing that on the console side yet. And I'm curious to see what PS6 is going to look like because they emphasize it again for machine learning. It's a huge part of ray tracing. And in general, it's the way CPU performance has gone up so much. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
what will PS6 look like hardware-wise as a result of Amethyst? Yeah, like? there, there's something else that interests me as well, the whole concept of uh, disregarding the MPU, uh, which is essentially a separate right. mm -hmm. block for machine learning functions. And uh, AMD is all in on that for their mobile chipset, seemingly. Um, but not here, you know, not in the PlayStation 6. It's just not a good fit. So that was interesting as well. Um, any final thoughts, Oliver, before we wrap this up? No, no, I'm I'm excited to see where things go. But I'm excited to see where things go in particular on the software side going forward. Yep. Because obviously we've seen some really great PS5 Pro patches. We've seen some that are a little bit more in need of possibly further, further work there. Um, I'd be very curious to see exactly what we see in the future if we do end up for seeing for instance some titles that might use more extensive ray tracing on ps5 as a result of those ray tracing enhancements if we might see titles right. that really do scale in a, in a way that's really compelling um that possibly might even be using technologies like path tracing might be using much more heavily ray traced lighting we've already seen with titles like f124 that you can really push out ray tracing on the playstation 5 pro relative to ps5 by using pssr by using that enhanced ray tracing performance in that gpu um, and of course being able to leverage those that much uh, higher level of compute and, and higher level of generalized memory bandwidth as well um i'd also be curious to see because this is a console I'd be very curious to see what Sony does with older software as well. Like we've already seen the enhanced image quality feature on PS5 Pro. Could we see something like frame gen if they do leverage some frame gen technology in the future? Could they leverage something like that for PS4 software? Because the great thing about uh, new games is they always take advantage of the hardware that you have. The great thing about PC is it can always take advantage of the hardware that you have. But unfortunately on consoles, given the constraints of how games are, are written, um, unless you have some, you know, interesting new capabilities that can only be leveraged in certain older titles with specific hand-tuned work like we see on the Xbox side of things, those games are sort of frozen in, in ice. So could you introduce some machine learning technologies when you have a much larger GPU, when you have much greater machine learning capability in that GPU, sort of like we see with enhanced image quality, but just push it out further? I think that'd be very interesting to see, uh, especially given that you'll have a console with two generations of hardware backwards compatibility when we get down to the ps6 that during that period you know you're going to have a lot of software potentially to work with and a lot of software that people might be interested in revisiting on that newer console they'd be hoping for some mm -hmm. enhancement there potentially so i think this is a really compelling presentation i think it shows where sony is at with regards to their collaboration with amd where they'd like things to go in the future their areas of interest across both firms um, but I think ultimately the, it's going to be the, the tale of the games here. <laughs> and I think we're going to need to see some really high quality pieces of software in PS5 Pro. And we're going to need to see in particular how technologies like PSSR develop and how Sony's machine learning push develops, presumably with, uh, technologies like frame generation, with RTD noising, with things like this in the future, presumably those are going to be a part of it as well.